x minus negative 1. Let's do a little work on this thing. We do y minus 2. We have negative 2 thirds. We're going to have x plus 1. This is great if you're asked to leave it in point slope form. Okay, if your teacher ever asks you, give me this in point slope form, you're done. That's, that's awesome. If you are supposed to write this in slope intercept form, you have some more work to do. Specifically, you need to distribute. And then you're going to have to add 2, like we were talking about at the beginning of this uh, example. So negative 2 thirds x. This is kind of nice. Negative 2 thirds times 1 is just minus 2 thirds. So far, so good? You sure? So we distribute that right there. We get negative 2 thirds x minus 2 thirds. Lastly, you have to get y by itself, which means you're going to add 2 to both sides. So y equals, we have negative 2 thirds x, that's from here. We have negative 2 thirds plus 2. Oh my gosh, how do you do negative 2 thirds plus 2? Well, right off to the side. Do negative 2 thirds, it has to go with the sign, plus 2. Of course we mean plus 2 over 1. You need a common denominator. This is just adding fractions from a long time ago. I can't spend a whole lot of time doing this in this class, but you multiply 3 over 3, just like you did with rational functions. You would have plus 6 thirds, which is equivalent to 2. You combine those together and you get positive 4 thirds, so you're going to put plus 4 thirds. And from here, you should be able to identify that our y-intercept is 4 thirds, our slope is negative 2 thirds, and we're good to go. If you had to graph this thing, you could certainly do it. How many people feel okay with that, that example? How many people got at least the slope? Raise your hand if you got at least the slope. How many people made it all the way down to here? Good. The last thing, it'll take me 10 seconds to talk about this. If you were to write the equation of a horizontal line containing, horizontal line means there's no slope, the slope is zero. Well, I just didn't say there's no slope. The slope is zero, and it's always a constant of y. So all you have to do with this thing, if it's horizontal, you go, oh, OK. Horizontal means y equals something. What's y equal? Look at your point. What is y equal here? That's your line. Okay. That's the equation of a horizontal line. It says y equals the constant. That 6 is never going to change. Uh, can you tell me, without even trying really, y equals what here? That's the horizontal line containing that point. It will contain every point that ends with a negative 2. That's how you do your horizontal lines. Did today make sense for you guys? Good, okay. So the example we're going to start with is the one on the board. We're going to try to write the equation of a line containing the point negative 1, 2, and parallel to a given equation. Now, when we're talking about making the equation of a line, you always need two things. What are the two things you need to write the equation of a line? You definitely need the slope. That's one of them. What's another thing you need? You gotta have a point. You don't necessarily need the y-intercept, but you have to have at least a point. So when we're talking about this, in order to write the equation of a line, you must have a point and the slope. got to have a point and a slope. And the reason is, 95% of the time, we're going to be using the point-slope form of a line, right? We need a point, we need the slope. If you have those two things, you have the equation of a line. Are you with me on this so far? I hope you're okay. So you've got to have those two conditions, otherwise you can't make an equation. Now, a couple nice things about this. First thing is, a point will always be given to you. You, all, you have, they have to give, be given a point, otherwise you can't do the problem. So therefore, Anytime you get a test or you get a problem on your homework, it's going to have at least one point. So the point will be given. At least one point's always given.
But you might have to find the slope. It could be given to you, but that's kind of rare for us. When you're first talking about equations, like back in Math A, yeah, they give you the slope almost all the time, right? Because you, you really rarely have to find it. Uh, but now, when we're in Math C, well, you're going to have to find the slope in most cases. So step one, point, or point number one is point's always given, but the slope you might have to find. Now, it could be given to you. If that's the case, then you have kind of a break, right? If, if you're given the slope, then you don't have to do a whole lot of work. So you might, it might be given. But more likely, you're going to be given one of these latter two situations. Either you're going to have the situation that we dealt with yesterday where I give you two points. Do you remember yesterday where I gave you the two points and we found the slope between those two points? And then we made the equation of the line? That's a very common thing to do. Sometimes instead of like this, I would have just two points up there. I say use a slope formula. It's going to give you the slope. Then we use that in conjunction with our point slope and we get the equation of the line. That's what, if you started your homework, that's what uh, was on some of your homework. Did you start your homework? Good. So you probably saw that. So the slope might be given. You might have to use this. If you're given two points. If I do that, then you use a slope formula. So let's check out this example. We're, we're trying to write the equation of the line that's contained at a certain point. So automatically our point's given. That's awesome. I told you that would always happen. You're always going to be given a point. But then we also have to find the slope because the two things we need to write the equation of the line are a point and the slope. We have the point. The next thing is we've got to find the slope. So let's take a look at this. Is the slope just directly given to you? Like it says, slope is this. No. Am I given two points? Yeah. Two no. points. No. Let's say here's one point, here's another point. Am I given that? No. Okay, so there's got to be a third situation. If you're not directly given the slope, and you don't have two points by which you can find the slope, there's got to be a third situation. And the third situation is you might be given another equation. Are we given another equation? Yeah. Okay. We need to be able to find the slope from that equation. That's our third option. So it's, if it's given, great, easy. If you have two points, you know what to do. That's a slope formula. If not, you will be given an equation. So we have to solve for y so that we can find the slope from that equation. So if given an equation, solve that for y. Put it in slope-intercept form. Why might we want to put that in slope into that form? Why would that be the case? Would that help us find the slope? What letter represents the slope up here? So as soon as we do that, hey, you get your slope. That's the idea. So our idea is if the slope's given, great. If you're given two points, then we're going to use the slope formula. So we got this situation again. We have Slope might be given. If you're given two points, find the slope using the slope formula. Otherwise, you're going to be given an equation. Solve that for y. Put it in slope-intercept form because then you can identify the slope from that equation and use that in the ways that we're going to talk about right now. So what am I talking about? The ways that we're going to talk about that right now. Well, there's two things that you're going to be doing on these problems. We're going to be trying to write equations that are parallel or perpendicular to a given equation. Tell me something about lines which are parallel. They never, cross each other. they never ever do. We actually had an example of that the very first part of this chapter. Lines which are parallel, well, they, they look like staircases. They never ever, they never touch. Why don't they touch? 
Say that again? They have the same slope? Yeah, they do. The slope meant rise over run. So if our lines are going up at the same rate all the time, they're like stairs. They're never, ever going to touch. So what we know from just thinking about these, these lines is that parallel lines always have the same slope. have exactly the same slope. They're going to go up or down at the same exact rate, meaning they're never going to touch, and meaning by definition that they are not going to be, um, or that they're going to be parallel. Now there's one other one that we have to talk about. We're going to do an example of this a little bit later. We also have to talk about perpendicular lines. perpendicular before? Yes. Parallel is pretty common, right? When we know parallel, they, they just don't touch. Perpendicular is a little bit different. Do perpendicular lines touch? Yes. At how many points? One point. Okay, two lines can only intersect at one point, right? They don't double back on, the, on each other, so that's good. But they intersect at a very specific, in a very specific way. How do perpendicular lines meet? Do they meet like, like this? Is that perpendicular? Stop, stop me when you get to perpendicular. Stop. Yeah. Which one? Hmm? When they get on 90 degrees. That's right. When, when you have a perfect, a perfect cross and every angle is 90 degrees, that means perpendicular. So perpendicular doesn't mean like this. That's not perpendicular. All right. That would mean at some obtuse angle and an acute angle that doesn't make a perpendicular set of lines. How you think of perpendicular is maybe these walls. This wall and the floor meet at a perpendicular angle. Angle. That's why they stand up straight, because it's at 90 degrees. If it was off a little bit, those people over there would probably be dead, right? Because this building would go, or on this side it would go. And that wouldn't be too good for us, would it? No. So walls are perpendicular. Perpendicular means lines which are meeting at 90 degrees. So when we talk about perpendicular lines, we're talking about this situation. You put a little box there signifying that it's 90 degrees. That's what that says. Now, let me ask you a question. Are perpendicular lines going to have the same slope? Oh, okay, so if they were perpendicular lines, uh, or sorry, if they were parallel lines, they would have the same slope. Naturally, that would make them parallel. So perpendicular can't have the same slope. They're going to be very, very much like opposite. But if I have negative 3 and positive 3, those aren't going to be perpendicular either. To find perpendicular lines, the slopes are actually not just opposites, but they're also reciprocals. Remember that, that reciprocation that you do with division of fractions? You reciprocate that and you multiply that same reciprocation is how you find perpendicular slopes. So in order to find perpendicular lines, we're going to have to look for slopes that are not only negative of each other, but also reciprocals of each other. Negative reciprocals. So perpendicular lines have slopes which are negative reciprocals. Well, will the slopes ever both be negative, or will one always be positive and the other be negative? When you have perpendicular lines, mm -hmm. one will be positive and one will be negative. It, it, think about it this way, right? If you have perpendicular lines, the only time it doesn't have